Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Lately I've been watching a lot of interviews with Otessa Moshveg, whose most recent novel, Lapvona, came out this year in 2022. And a lot of people seem to have a lot of criticisms about Otessa Moshveg, her writing in this book in particular, and some of her other books. And so I wanted to delve into some interviews with her and to see how she thinks about her writing, um, hear her read from her books, um, have people who actually appreciate her work ask her questions about it and give insights about it, because I'm really curious, what is all this backlash about Otessa Moshveg's books? Because she has six books published, so you know, somebody must like her books. Um, and I have to say, when I was watching all of these interviews with her and, um, and, and, and media with people talking about her books um, before interviewing her, I found her extremely interesting. I thought her story ideas were really interesting. I thought her commentary on why she thinks people don't like some of her writing very interesting and insightful, and I think she's extremely self-aware. Um, and I love the fact that she doesn't care that people have a problem with the things that she writes. And her criticisms about those criticisms are very interesting as well. She's very insightful, I thought, about why she thinks that people don't like the way she writes some things. And a few people have said that they think that if Otessa Moshveg was a man writing about some of the things she writes about, that nobody would have a problem with it. So I thought that was really interesting. And so I am really interested to read Otessa Moshveg's work. I've never read anything by her. I just find her extremely interesting, intelligent, insightful, and funny. And some of the readings that she did, um, her work was both serious and funny at the same time. A lot of people seem to criticize some of her writing as being disgusting, um, and she's fully aware of that. And it doesn't bother her. Um, and I want to read her books. I want to know what it is that people find disgusting about her work. Um, and I want to know what I think about it. So I'm going to be doing a long-term vlog project uh, reading all of Tessa Moshveg's books. Um, one of her books in particular, called Eileen, received a lot of praise when it came out. And it is on the list for September for my Killer Reads a Thrill a Month book club because it is included in Penguin's list of the top thrillers of all time. So I will be reading that book anyway. But I want to read all of her books in order. And there is one book that came before that one. So that's what I'm going to do in this vlog. I'm going to read all of Otessa Moshveg's books. And I'm going to report throughout the process and at the end what I think about her writing, what I think about her stories, because I like to make up my own mind. And I have a feeling that people are being unfair to her. Maybe they just don't get it. Maybe I won't get it. I don't know. But I'm curious to see how I get on with her work. Otessa Moshveg's first book was published in 2014, and it is a novella, and it is called McGlue. So that's going to be the first book I'm going to read. And since Eileen, the second book, uh, is going to be have to be read by me in September. I'm going to have to read this book um, pretty soon. Today is August 14th as I'm filming this, so I will be getting into this book very soon um, because I want to complete it before I read Eileen. And Eileen, uh, the cover of which looks like this, was published in 2015. This won the Penn Hemingway Prize and received, you know, a bunch of praise. Uh, the main character seems to be the kind of character that Moshveg likes to write about. Somebody who isn't perfect, who isn't beautiful, although she does write about beautiful characters as well. But, in, but it seems typical that she writes about characters who are sort of on the margins, who are not the typical heroes or heroines um, that we come to expect in books and literature. And other media as well. So Eileen will be read in September. I don't know what months I'm going to be reading these books or if I'll just follow them up one after another. Uh, like I said, this is going to be a long-term vlog project. But her next book was a collection of short stories and it was published in 2017 and that is Homesick for Another World, um, which has stories I think from 2014 up through 2017 or maybe 2012 up through 2017. I'm just going to take a quick look here because I'm pretty sure, yeah, 2012 
uh, up through 2017. So this is a pretty good range, I would think, of her work for several years. And probably one of Moshveg's most widely known books on booktube is um, My Year of Rest and Relaxation, which was published in 2018. I remember a lot of people talking about this book a couple of years ago when I first started watching booktube, even though this book had come out, you know, prior to that. Um, I've heard Moshveg read from this book, and I really like the way that she wrote the story, at least from what she read um, in the interviews I saw and the readings that she did. Um, I found it both interesting in a way, in a serious way, and in a funny way, because her delivery of when she was reading these stories, um, when she was reading passages from this novel, was very comedic, but in a sort of flat, dry tone, and I thought it was a really interesting way to read the book. And from watching Mashveg read from this book and others, I really became extremely interested in um, how, why other people seem to have such a problem with her writing. Because from what I could tell from the writing, it was a really excellent work. Um, so I don't know. But her next book was Death in Her Hands, which was published in 2020. And I'd seen her read some things from this one as well. This one I know is about a character who um, finds out somebody has been murdered, but there is no body. And she sort of has to uh, learn how to investigate a homicide, even though she's just this amateur woman um, with no experience whatsoever. And I think that premise is extremely interesting. So um, another interesting idea to see come to life on the page. And that's the thing about Moshveg's work is that I think her ideas are so different and so interesting. And a lot of them seem to be um, these cases where there's very few characters or not a lot really happens or the character doesn't really go anywhere. Um, and she's really exploring the internal life of the characters in a lot of those books. Now, the book that she has most recently had published was published this year in 2022, and that is Lapvona. And I have seen some scathing booktube reviews about this book. And I have to tell you, um, I think that they're probably unfounded, or people are just not getting it, or maybe they're too prudish. I don't really know. But like I said, a lot of people that I've seen who have interviewed Mashvek have said to her, if a man wrote these books, nobody would have a problem with them. So I'm very curious to see what that's all about. If I agree or if I agree with the booktubers who don't like these books, um, I, I'm dying to know what all the ire and hate is all about. Um, yeah, but I have to say, I really love this cover. <laughs> it's really an excellent cover. I don't really like most of her other covers, but this one I really, really like. Um, yeah, so I'm interested. I I'm hooked on her. Uh, if you haven't watched any interviews or readings by Otessa Moshveg, I really think you should explore um, explore them because she's so intelligent and so insightful and she knows full well what people think about her books and she doesn't care. She's not writing for the people who don't like her books. She's writing to explore ideas and explore characters and see where they go, answer questions she has and ask other ones. And I'm interested to read her books and see what those questions are and see how I feel about it. So come along on my vlog journey with me. Um, it's going to take several months to do, um, but I'm all in. So here we go. First book is McGlue. I'm on a morning walk, which I've been doing every morning recently because over the past two years, I have gained a lot of weight. If you look back on my very first videos, you will be able to tell, definitely. Um, not that it really matters, other than my health is really suffering for it at the moment. And like I said in a previous video, cutting out the sugar and the salt has really been helping with my throat. Um, but it's also helping me to lose weight. But also, my body is killing me and I need to get back into exercise. I used to exercise every single day. I used to do yoga every day. I used to run and I felt amazing. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to get back into that. 
uh, I really need to move. I'm 44 years old. I can't be sitting around. So yeah, out on a beautiful morning walk. So I finished McGlue. I read it in one sitting because it's really a novella. It's only 145 pages. Um, so I took a couple hours and read it. It reads pretty quickly. Um, what to say about it? So this is my very first experience with Otessa Moshveg's writing. I've seen a ton of interviews, like I said, with her and just find her fascinating. And I was not disappointed in this novella. It is really, really interesting. Um, so the basic story of the well, the basic story is about this young man they call McLou. That I get the impression that's not his real name. Some people call him Nick, but that's also, he says, not his real name. I think his real name is never really mentioned in the story. But it follows McGlue, and he has been um, sort of apprehended and blamed for the murder of his friend Johnson. Um, and he's being held in... I guess like the under part of a boat um, at sea and at various ports. Um, Johnson, I guess, has come up as being murdered and McLew is being blamed for it, but he has no recollection of having done such a thing. And he and Johnson were best friends. And McGlue is an alcoholic and he um, doesn't, so he blacks out a lot. He just does, he has a fuzzy memory because he's always drunk. <laughs> um, and I guess throughout the story, we learn about his friendship with Johnson and how Johnson, um, sort of, sort of fed the alcoholic tendencies that McGlue has, but also was there to like, uh, sort of get him together, pick him up, um, take him various places, make sure he was looked after, make sure nothing bad befell him. So the story gets very complicated. I'm not going to go into any spoilers really with these discussions about these books in this vlog. I just want to say the basic story premise. And um, so McGlue is, you know, after he's apprehended, he's brought ashore to Salem, Massachusetts, um, where he is um, put in a holding cell and he's going to be tried for the murder. And he has a lawyer who tries to get the story out of him, but he really has really no firm recollection, though he does start to, um, sort of maybe piece together what happened to Johnson and at whose hand he died. Um, and there's this very interesting sort of queer element to the story, which I was not expecting. At first, you kind of think that McGlue is probably a homophobe, and it does seem like that, and maybe he is throughout the whole um, story. He does use the F word several times in reference to somebody in particular, but also uh, as regarding sex acts. 
but he does have this very unique close relationship with Johnson, which I wasn't expecting. And it does veer toward queerness toward the end of the story. So that was an interesting surprise. What can I say about the writing? I didn't really, I mean, I had a, basically an inkling going into McLew about sort of how Atessa Moshevig writes because I've heard her read some of her stuff, but I've never read the writing before. So I really, I really liked it. I was really into it. It was very visceral. It was very um, bodily and vivid. And yes, people are correct to say that she does have, she does write about disgusting bodily functions and bodily things, but they are but they're so well rendered like they make sense to the story there's this really gritty reality to the vivid imagery that she's painting about these hard lives that these people in Maglu particularly are living um the kind of filth and smut and disgust that surrounds them that they're basically immersed in because that's their life and these are the people that they come into contact with and the people they are even and i just was enthralled with just the the imagery that she was conjuring up and the the sort of um meter of the prose and the way it's almost like this like song beat the way that she's writing in this story not that not that it's maybe intended to be that way but there's like um, a lot of like beginning sentences and without a full structure or just like short beats, um, repetitions and things like that in the writing, which I really liked. I thought it was really well done. I, I really was interested in the characters as well. They were not good people. They were not simple. They had really, um, bad things about them. They were not good to each other. They were not good to themselves. Um, they treated each other like crap. <laughs> um, and, but there's also this sort of like joviality as well in there with the people like ragging on each other, but in a good humored way, people like really taking the piss out of each other as well. Um, there's violence, of course, in a story about murder, is, uh, you know, but there's violence toward all kinds of people in this book. Uh, people who deserve it, people who don't deserve it, um, seemingly. Um, but yeah, I really liked it. I really liked the writing so far. So it was a really good introduction. I'm glad I'm reading this, these in order because I'm interested to see how the writing evolves or changes as we go through. So the next book that I'm going to be reading by Mashveg is um, Eileen, which is on my Killer Reads of Thrill a Month book club list for September. So I will be reading this in September. Um, today is um, August 23rd, so I'll, I'll be starting this probably at the beginning of September. Um, I'm really excited to get into it. It sounds good based on the back copy, and uh, I'm just excited to see where she goes with her writing in that book, which won an award. So, I mean, I think it's really good. Also, I should mention that the uh, McGlue won the Believer Book Award, but Eileen won the Penn Hemingway Prize. So two award-winning books right there. So yeah, I'm excited to get into Eileen next.
this was right off the bat a five star book for me and I'm going to say probably not everybody's gonna like this book. So this story is about a 24 year old woman named Eileen who works at a youth prison and she lives with her very abusive alcoholic uh, well, I would say emotionally abusive, alcoholic father, who's also somewhat of a hoarder, it seems like. They live in a pretty filthy environment. Um, Eileen's the kind of person who doesn't really think very much of herself. She has a very rich inner life where she imagines all sorts of scenarios for herself and the people that she comes into contact with. Um, and a lot of that inner life has to do with fantasizing about a man named Randy, who's a prison guard, where she works. But she also fantasizes about uh, things happening to the people she doesn't care for so much in her life. The thing about Eileen is that she wears a mask throughout pretty much every day of her life, uh, where she doesn't really let her emotions be shown, and she doesn't show that anything really affects her personally either. While she's working at this prison, a new employee named Rebecca starts working there as an educator for the kids. And Rebecca becomes convinced that one of the inmates um, has been abused by his father and, uh, and killed his father because of that. But he has never told anybody anything about it, and his mother um, knew about it, and he says, and didn't do anything to help him. And the teacher, Rebecca, wants to help him in some way. And so... One night, she does something about it, and she calls Eileen to come and help her. And she's basically implicating Eileen in this crime, basically, that she's committing. And ultimately leaves Eileen sort of holding the bag. <laughs> and Eileen decides, since she's always dreamt about running away, maybe this is the perfect time to do it. And what I liked about this story, besides the impeccable writing by Otessa Moshvag, I have to say, is that there's this hopefulness to Eileen's character. When you're reading the story, she's very, it's really down in the dumps. It's really practically depressing to read because there's nothing good in Eileen's life. Nobody likes her. She doesn't have any friends. She doesn't like feel good in her body. She doesn't feel like she belongs anywhere. But it's told from her point of view as an older woman who, after she has gotten away, is recounting these events. And the Eileen that got away decided to shed the mask and let love in and give all of her love, give it out, um, no matter the consequences, even if it put her in shitty situations, she decided to live with her whole heart and her whole being. And um, we don't get to see that Eileen, but Eileen tells us that. So it's very interesting, um, that sort of structure for the novel. But I absolutely loved it. I really loved it. I thought it was really, really good. Um, this won the Penn Hemingway Prize. This book was published in tw uh, 2015. Um, and it deserved it. It deserved to win a prize. It was so good. The writing was impeccable. Like I said when I read McGlue, um, it's disgusting. There's disgusting things that happen. Um, Eileen is very corporeal and bodily um, aware and... She describes what everybody's uh, sort of functions are, <laughs> and and she doesn't shy away from descriptions of any sort, and she really talks about the filth and the grit of life. And I, I'm getting that that's a Moshfeg thing, and I'm, I'm all in for it because I really love it. I love writers who don't shy away from any of that stuff, and I said before, Moshfeg is a writer's writer, and she, she didn't pull out any stops with this. Eileen was a really, really complicated character, and I thought that Moshveg did her justice. She really felt real. I could really relate to her on a personal level. She was just somebody like... We've all hated our bodies at some point. At least I feel like if you're an average person, you probably hated yourself or your body at some point. So we've all had those thoughts at one point or another. Um, we all have bad thoughts about people we come into contact with that we don't like. And we often fantasize about bad things happening to them or, you know, getting one up on them or something like that. If you don't, I seriously question whether or not you're a human being. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I just really like the choices that Moshvag makes for her characters. They, they seem like they're real people in the real world. They hide things. They don't want to confront reality, but they do in their brains. 
and sometimes they just want to escape and I feel like that was like the most the most hopeful part of this book was that um the idea of escape escape from hating yourself escape from hating other people escape from this world where you feel like you're in a prison um where you feel like nobody understands you and you don't feel like you belong and just opening yourself up to the possibilities that the world can offer you but it really takes you making this conscious effort to do that and not everybody can do that and i applaud eileen for making those choices but i thought you know all the characters in this book there are very few characters and really only very few who we really hear from quite a bit um namely eileen's father um rebecca and and um the youth boy the youth prison boy's mother a little bit um but it's mostly all about Eileen and her father and um, how Eileen feels trapped in her life. Um, she just doesn't feel any sense of love whatsoever. And I understand, too, the idea of putting on a mask to sort of escape it all, to act like nothing affects you, because that's just the easiest way to survive and the easiest way to get people to just leave you alone. So it was easy five stars for me. I really love that sort of a thing. I like dark books, dark characters. Okay, so next up I'm going to be reading Homesick for Another World. This is Otessa Mosh Begg's uh, short story collection, which was published in 2017. And so here's what the back of it says. There's something eerily unsettling about Otessa Mosh Begg's stories, almost dangerous, while also being delightful and funny. The characters in this highly anticipated debut collection are unsteady on their feet. They yearn for connection and betterment, but are often tripped up by their own baser impulses and as existential insecurities. Yet in Moshveg's unique voice, the grotesque and the outrageous are infused with tenderness and compassion. The flesh is weak, the timber is crooked, and people are cruel to each other and stupid and hurtful. But beauty comes from strange sources, and the dark energy surging through these stories is powerfully invigorating. And I think that that last part is really what I'm noticing so far about Otessa Moshveg's stories and books, is beauty comes from strange sources. You know, the two I've read so far, McGlue and Eileen, are dark, unsettling stories with a lot of grotesquerie and things like that, but there's like a beauty in it. There's this hopefulness as well in the stories. So I, I'm, I believe I'm going to find that as well in this one, in this collection of short stories. So uh, I'm really looking forward to getting to it and I can't wait to tell you what I think.
So I finished Homesick for Another World, and uh, it's more of the same kind of writing. This one is a bunch of short stories, like I said, and um, it was just as affecting, I think, as all as the other stories, as McLew and Eileen so far. Um, yeah, there's a wide variety of stories in here. Um, male perspectives, female perspectives, different age ranges. Um, but I would say all of the characters have that same sort of immersion in their bodily form and in the uh, sort of bodily objectification of other people that they come into contact with. A thing that I'm noticing about Moshveg's writing is that she, since she touches on the very worst aspects of what it is to be human, I feel like a lot of the time, um, it's like she's forcing us to examine our own selves while we're reading this and um, sort of like face our own selfishness in the world and, you know, all the dark places that um, that we go in our minds that we don't really want to let anybody else have access to or we don't really let on that we have these sorts of thoughts about other people or about ourselves. Uh, I really feel like that's sort of the point of these stories and the point of Moshveg's writing is to sort of make us face our own morality and make us face our own prejudices about our bodies and other people's bodies. That's really what I'm getting mostly from her work so far. And a lot of these stories had that sort of hope at the end of them, that sort of feeling of hope, although some of the stories did not. <laughs> Uh, but that's what I'm getting from her a lot of the time, is there's this deep immersion into darkness and this deep immersion into the vulgarity of life and facing that in ourselves and other people and then coming out either with hope or without it. Um, so far, that's what I'm getting from her. And I really enjoy the writing. I'm really, really liking her writing style. It's very simple, but I find an elegance in it. Uh, I've said that before, and I really think that that's holding up. Um, and as we're going forward, next into 2018's My Year of Rest and Relaxation, which enjoyed its fame and its five, 15 minutes of glory in the sun, uh, either, you know, a few years ago, I think, although people were still talking about it last year on BookTube. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting into it. So here's what this is about. Our narrator should be happy, shouldn't she? She's young, thin, pretty, a recent Columbia graduate, works an easy job at a hip art gallery, lives in an apartment on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, paid for like the rest of her needs, by her inheritance. But there is a hole in her heart, and it isn't just the loss of her parents, or the way her Wall Street boyfriend treats her, or her sadomasochistic relationship with her best friend Riva. It's the year 2000 in a city aglitter with wealth and possibility. What could be so terribly wrong? Both tender and blackly funny, merciless and compassionate, my year of rest and relaxation is a powerful answer to that question and a showcase for the gifts of one of our major writers working at the height of her powers. And that's what I'm finding in Mashag's writing. It, it is tender at times and it is funny. She's not all serious. There's a lot of dry wit and dry comedy in her writing. And I have heard her read from this and I definitely found the part she was reading and the voice she was reading in to have really funny elements. So I'm really looking forward to that. And that exploration of happiness and what does that mean and uh, should you be happy because you have all these things? Do things make you happy? What is it that makes you happy? And and how do you face your life if you're not happy? Uh, what what steps do you take and what do you do to either see that through or, or make adjustments or whatever? Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting into this. But those things, I think, speak volumes about her work. So this one's up next.
I finished my year of rest and relaxation. Um, I really like this book, like, a lot. It wasn't a five-star like Eileen was for me, but it is a strong four-star book for me. Um, so it's about, uh, like I said, uh, from reading the back, um, a, a woman who um, is very beautiful. Her best friend really looks up to her and sort of is jealous of her uh, beauty, so she's quite well aware of, you know, how people perceive her. She is left an inheritance by her dead fam parents, um, and she decides that she's going to um, take a whole year to try to rejuvenate herself from uh, all this loss that she has endured. Um, and she is going to do that by self-medicating and keeping herself um, mostly asleep for most of the year, if possible, all of it. <laughs> so she will obviously have to be awake to keep medicating herself and to keep, you know, some sort of caloric intake of, of some sort. But her goal is to sort of um, cut out all of the feelings that she could possibly have, to rejuvenate every single cell in her body so that when she comes, up, comes out of the year, she is a new person um, bodily and hopefully with a whole new outlook on life. Also throughout this book, she is talking about a man who she really is in love with who doesn't seem to have the same sort of feelings for her and he's pretty despicable so i don't really know why she thinks so highly of him but i think part of it is that she wants him to want her um so i think that her her personality is a moshveg personality in that she isn't perfect she puts all of her faults on display um she's very self-involved and really trying to uh, avoid the bad things in her life, which a lot of it, I feel a lot of Moshveg's characters try to avoid things in their life. They just much rather live in a fantasy world. For this one, it was much more for me about, you know, self-involvement and, and feeling like, like really delving into the idea that you are, your life is the most important thing. Um, but at the same time, what you're doing when you're doing that is ignoring everybody else and everything else for the sake of your own betterment. But at the same time, the, the heart of this story for me was the fact that she is feeling so much grief and loss and she doesn't want to feel it, but she can't avoid it and she's doing her best to avoid it. And everything that she's trying to do while medicating herself and sleep her life away is hide. She's trying to hide from all of the bad things that have happened to her. She's trying to not feel emotions. And I think that's a real um, commentary on a lot of what I see today from people just in general, but especially on social media. Like people wanna hide themselves. They don't wanna show any sort of negative, um, they don't want any sort of negativity entering their life and they are comparing themselves to other people. Um, the narrator of this book is constantly comparing herself to her friend Reva, who visits her pretty often during this year, who she really is mean to, looks down on, but she's trying to hide herself. She's trying to, like in social media, I see everybody comparing themselves to everybody else, hiding all the bad things about their lives, wanting to be something else, wanting to have what other people have, wanting to um, hide from emotion. God forbid anybody ever have emotions, you know, especially negative emotions. Ooh, that's like the worst thing in the world, apparently, online. Um, I feel like this book is a commentary on all of that stuff, but it's also a commentary on grief and how, you know, eventually you're going to have to deal with it in some way. And I feel like the character in this book comes away from the story with a sense of hope for her future. And and I'm finding that in a lot of Mashveg's books, particularly with Eileen specifically, that there is that sort of feeling of hope at the end of the story, where she has shed, at the end of this story, everything. All of her possessions are gone, all of her attachments are gone, and she is starting anew. Um, and she seems pretty uh, upbeat about it. <laughs> so... You know, I don't know what happens to her, but I, I tend to think that she's going to work it out. And um, so all of the sort of grief and misery that de and depression that you read throughout the story, I mean, you're pretty much immersed in the depression of the story. 
um, of the character's depression and anxiety. Even though you're immersed in that, you come away with this sense of hope. Um, I really liked it. I really like the writing. I really like Moshveg's writing. It's very straightforward. She doesn't shy away from anything, uh, which is why I said she's a writer's writer. She really gets in there. Um, there's nothing that she won't say in her writing. And she shows all of the dirt, all of the nitty gritty. Uh, and I like that. I would say this one is the least disgusting <laughs> of all of her books to this point. Um, and I also think it's one of the strongest efforts uh, that I've seen so far. Um, like I said, Eileen for me was a five-star book because that book was... Um, I'm judging that book in a different way than I'm judging this one. I never judge uh, any author's books by the same criteria. Um, this one just was a different kind of book for me, and it is just a different kind of book. Um, but again, very similar in that sort of um, theming of depression, self-involvement, um, and hope at the end. So I really liked it. So the next book uh, by Mashveg is Death in Her Hands, which was published in 2020. Uh, I don't really hear anybody talk about this book on booktube or really anywhere, um, so I'm really interested to see what it's about. I do believe it's about a woman who finds out that another person is dead, but the dead woman doesn't really play a part physically in the book, I think. I think the I think it's more about sleuthing, but I'm going to read the back um, to get a better understanding going forward for this book, what it's about. From one of our most ceaselessly provocative literary talents, a novel of haunting metaphysical suspense about an elderly widow whose life is upturned when she finds an ominous note on a walk in the woods. Her name was Magda. Nobody will ever know who killed her. It wasn't me. Here is her dead body. Quote, end quote. But there is no body. There is no dead body. Becoming obsessed with solving this mystery, our narrator imagines who Magda was and how she met her fate. Oddly, her suppositions begin to find correspondences in the real world, and with mounting excitement and dread, the fog of mystery starts to fade into menacing certainty. A triumphant blend of horror, suspense, and pitch black comedy, Death in Her Hands asks us to consider how the stories we tell ourselves both reflect the truth and keep us blind to it. Once again, we are in the hands of a narrator whose unreliability is well-earned and the stakes have never been higher. Uh, this sounds really good. I like the suspense, horror, mystery aspect of it. I do like the black comedy element too. And I wanted to say, I forgot to say that in uh, My Year in Rest and Relaxation, that it is funny. Like, even though it's depressing, like, the character is very funny. She's very snide and sarcastic in her in her thoughts and in her comments. And even in the way she deals with people, particularly her friend Riva, just the things that come out of her and, and the doctor that she sees, the psychiatrist that she's seeing, um, it's just ridiculous. The things that come out of her mouth, she's very dry, dry, sarcastic, like that kind of personality. And um, just the, and I have to say the psychiatrist in this book also is quite hilarious and should not be practicing psychiatry. <laughs> um, but yeah, humor also is a thing that runs through Moshveg's work in subtle ways. And if you are not, like, aware of dry humor, or if, or if it's not just something that you catch in literature, you probably are missing out on it. And maybe that's why a lot of Moshveg's writing is considered not good or, or just, you know, in uh, disgusting and not, I don't know whatever, just depressing, but it's not. It's funny. There's funny stuff in here, too. Um, the characters in this book, in particular, um, are just over the top in a lot of ways, and the the narrator really, like, is cutting with her remarks, but in a funny way. So I, I'm, I like the humor in it. So I'm looking forward to the humor in Death in Her Hands as well. I'm really excited uh, to read it. So that's the next book coming up. It's October 22nd, and I am on my way to meet Kim from Middle of the Book March. We're going to, first of all, I've never met Kim, so this is exciting. And we're going to go to a bookstore or two, and we're going to go to lunch, and then we're probably going to go to Queechee Gorge. I don't know if Kim's ever been there. I've been there before. It's really beautiful. Um, unfortunately, this time of the fall in Vermont, the leaves have fallen and or are past their peak of color. It was a beautiful fall this year, um, and I 
have been to Vermont a few times to see the leaves, but um, yeah, it's not as pretty as it usually is, but I'm excited to see Kim, so looking forward to that. Okay, I finished Death in Her Hands, and I have to say I really like this one too. Um, and this one had a different sort of feeling for me. It did have the same kind of characters that, well not the same kind of characters, but the same sort of loneliness in it, the same sort of character who's pretty unassuming, you would think, um, somebody who doesn't really make waves in society. The main character's name is Vesta, and she's in her early 70s, and she lives alone in a sort of rundown cabin. I guess it used to be a Girl Scout camp on a little lake with her dog. And her dog's name is Charlie, which I loved because my dog's name was Charlie. So I was imagining him through the whole thing, which at the end got a little bit disconcerting. <laughs> um, so I had to stop imagining that it was him. But... So in any case, Vesta is a very Moshveg type character, she, it, but I will say that this book is probably the least disgusting, quote unquote, of all of Moshveg's books. She doesn't really talk about a lot of gruesome, um, dirty, mucky stuff in this one and until a certain part toward the end, and then it gets a little yucky like that. <clears throat> but again that stuff doesn't bother me i think it adds to the story it adds to the humanity of the character and of the situations and things that actually people think about and remark about all the time um but it's interesting this story is like a suspense mystery and it really does ramp up the suspense toward the end um which i really enjoyed so vesta used to be married but her husband is long dead and she comes across this note that she finds from a from the death of a woman named Magda and the note says this and this is not a spoiler it's at the very first lines of the pay, of the book her name was Magda nobody will ever know who killed her it wasn't me here is her dead body but there is no body uh, and so Vesta finds this note just laying on the ground and she becomes enthralled with this mystery of who Magda is who killed her what happened to the body where is it um, and she sort of fancies herself as becoming a sleuth, like a detective, but it's all in her mind that she's doing this. She doesn't report it to the police. She doesn't um, act in a way that you would expect a person to act. The thing about Vesta that I found is that she was quite flighty, maybe a little whimsical. This story was much more whimsical in nature, I think, than the other Moshveg books I've read so far. And it was a really interesting way to go about it. And I'm finding that... Otessa Moshveg is like unlike any writer that I've ever read. She, her style is very different than anyone else I've ever read. I know it's her when I'm reading the book, and the stories that she chooses to tell are stories that I have not seen anybody else tackle in these kinds of ways before. So I think she's so interesting and unique as a storyteller and as a writer. Um, I've particularly started to feel that in this book. I've been noticing it you know, previously, and especially, you know, in the last book, I really noticed, you know, I've never heard anybody tell a story like this before. And definitely in this one, that's solidified. So this is a strong four-star effort for me, for Otessa Moshveg. I really, really liked this story. I liked the character. I thought it was really interesting that she never reports the thing. The thing that took the points off, the point off for me, it's the reason it's not a five-star book, is that at the end of it, it goes into this much more whimsical arena. Um, 
and it closes out in a very sort of weird way. It reminded me of Stephen King a little bit in the weird endings that he sometimes comes up with just off the cuff that out, come out of nowhere. They're just these random sort of endings. <laughs> That's how I felt about the ending of this book. But throughout the story, it really builds suspense and it really builds a mystery and it really builds Vesta's character. And we're so much more interested, I think, at least I am, in Vesta's character and how she goes about what she's doing and the things that she goes through in her mind um, than I was about the actual mystery of who killed Magda and where the body was. Because I don't think the story is really about that. The story is really about Vesta and, and about her character and why she's not reporting it and what sort of a mind trick she has played on herself throughout uh, her marriage with her husband, for example, who comes up repeatedly. At first, she sort of denies that anything was wrong with their marriage, and then as it goes forward, she's really, you know, unloading uh, on all the issues that she had with her husband. So I think the story was really interesting and all about who Vesta is, particularly, and what's going on in her mind, and what her husband thought about her, and what she thinks about him, um, and the poor dog in this book. And he was very sweet through most of the book, but it gets pretty sad. Uh, so there's that. But I really loved it. Strong four stars. And the next book that's um, the final book that Moshveg recently published that came out this year in 2022 that I will be reading next is Lepvona. I'm really excited to read it. I think this cover is absolutely incredible. So cool. Um, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to this. This is the last one in the project, last one in my vlog. And so I'm going to read the little blurb here about what it's about um, as we go forward to the conclusion of my vlog. So, little Merrick, the abused and delusional son of the village shepherd, never knew his mother. His father told him she died in childbirth. One of Merrick's few con consolations is his enduring bond with the blind village midwife, Ina, who suckled him when he was a baby, as she did many of the village's children. Ina's gifts extend beyond child care. For some people, her ability to trans her ability to receive transmissions of sacred knowledge from the natural world is a godsend. For others, Ina's home in the woods outside the village is a place to fear and to avoid, a godless place. Among the villagers is Father Barnabas, the town priest and lackey for the depraved lord and governor Villiam, whose hilltop manor contains a secret embarrassment of riches. The people's desperate need to believe that there are powers that be who have their best interests at heart is put to a cruel test by William and the priest, especially in this year of record drought and famine. But when fate brings Merrick into violent proximity with the Lord's family, new and occult forces arise to upset the old order. By year's end, the veil between blindness and sight, life and death, and the natural world and the spirit world will prove to be very thin indeed. And so far, Moshveg's stories have been told in the first person, and I'm pretty positive this one is told in the thir third person. So this is the first third person book that she uh, has written, at least that's been published. And also, um, it's historical, like way back, I think, in 1500s, I believe. So um, yeah, it's quite different than anything she's uh, had so far. I apologize for the lighting in this section of my vlog. The goddamn sun in November is right there at this time of day, and it's uh, killing me, but <laughs> here we are. So moving on to Lapvona next. I'm 45 years old, and I just had braces put on my teeth because my alignment is a mess and it's messing up my teeth. So, 45 years old, I have braces now for the next two years. That's my exciting trip for today. Uh, yeah, here we go. It actually doesn't feel very weird. I mean, it feels weird to have things pushing against the inside of your lips. And I talk a little funny, especially when I'm trying to do F's and V's. <laughs> but uh, I'm surprisingly not that uncomfortable, and I actually don't mind the way they look. So I got the clear kind, so they're not as bad, but that's my adventure. Here we go, next two years. I I'm looking forward to uh, having them straightened out, though. So, yay. 
It's December 4th and I have finished Lapvona, the final book of Otessa Moshvags that I had to read for this vlog. Oh, this was an interesting book. It was quite different from her other books in a lot of ways. First of all, this is the only book I believe that she wrote in the third person, Omniscient. So instead of being stuck inside of one single main character's mind the whole time, we get to jump around to almost all of the characters in the book and sort of see from their point of view what the consequences are of the things that happen in the book and how they feel about it and you know uh, I really like that it was very interesting um, the story is set in the sort of pseudo medieval era and it's a fictional town called Lepvona where a boy kills another boy and uh, as a consequence of that, he becomes a sort of surrogate son to the parents of the boy he killed. That's not really a spoiler, that's what the whole story is based about, um, and um, it all stems from there. What happens stems from that incident. Um, a lot of characters, typical of the Mashveg uh, Ove, I would say, in that there's a lot of focus on um, the body and being immersed in the body and the sort of darker aspects of what it means to be a human being. However, as with many of her other books, I found it quite humorous in a lot of places. And the thing about Atessa Moshveg, which I hope you take away from this video, is that you shouldn't take her stories completely seriously. And if you are, you're reading them wrong. Uh, because they're very dark and a lot of um, you know, uh, disgusting things happen. A lot of uh, dark elements are incorporated in the book. And in order to balance that, there has to be some levity. There has to be some humor. And Moshweg is the first person to tell you that um, she would have been a comedian <laughs> if she had failed as a writer. <clears throat> I really liked it. I really liked the story. I'm giving it four stars. Um, I liked the... I like the different perspective that she gave us in this book. I like jumping from character to character. Um, a lot of the time I don't really like that, but I think that it was important in this book because this book in particular is about a community and um, the various elements of the community and the various contributions of the people of the community, but also what each of them does to others in the community as a consequence of all of the events that happen. So in that respect, I think it really was important that it be that way. I think Otessa Mashvag is really good. I think she's a really good writer. I think she has really interesting things to say. She tells stories that I think nobody else is going to tell, and her she has such a unique voice. I don't think there's anybody that I could compare her to. Um, I don't think I personally have read anybody who's like her. And I really think that's interesting. I think she's got longevity because of that. I think she's going to do some interesting things. I'm interested to see what her next book is going to be like. Um, it's been a long trajectory from McLew to Lepvona. Uh, I've been at this vlog for four months, so um, I've been spending a lot of time with Otessa Moshveg. I think she's a really great writer. I think that she is not afraid to tell a story the way she wants to tell it, and I think she's not afraid of the reader. And I think that is a good lesson for writers um, in general, is that you should write the story you want to write. No self-censoring, no censoring because of who's going to read your story. Forget about the audience. Um, I pretty sure I saw an interview where Moshveg said she doesn't really quote unquote care what her readers think meaning that it's not a she's not writing the story for you she's writing the story to tell the story she's writing the story to try new things to experiment to um give voice to these people who um may not who we don't hear from normally and also she's giving a voice to the sort of baser instincts that we all have and we like to pretend that we don't have, I would say. Um, and she really leans into that, and I think it's really interesting. This is a very weird book, but I think the story in itself is really cool. It's almost like an allegory, maybe like a fable in sort of in some sort of way. 
parable, maybe? I think it has a lot of parallels to where we are in our sort of contemporary culture, specifically, and how people choose to believe in certain things despite the evidence um, uh, and what they place their faith in and the consequences of that, I think. Uh, I thought it was an excellent book. So that's the end of the vlog. If you've watched this whole thing, like, you know, awesome. <laughs> um, I had a lot of fun making it. It took a long time, um, but I really wanted to do this. I wanted to see what all the fuss was about, why people were um, freaking out over Rotessa Moshveg's work uh, in both good and bad ways. And I really think she's misunderstood. I think people take her too seriously. I think that if a man were writing this sort of work, um, we wouldn't hear about it the way we hear about it when people talk about Otessa Moshveg in that, um, in all the negative things they have to say about her. I think that it's a, there's a lot of um, sexism uh, in the writing world as far as storytelling. I think a lot of people think that women should write certain kinds of stories and in certain ways. And I think Otessa Moshveg doesn't care what you think. <laughs> and I love that. So I had fun. I really enjoyed the books. The only book I gave five stars to was Eileen, but I think all of them are at least four star reads for me. Um, so if you haven't read Otessa Moshveg, I'd be curious to know um, what you would think about her. So I encourage you to pick her up. Uh, and if you have, you know, let me know in the comment section down below what you think about the whole thing. Um, I'll be looking forward to anybody's thoughts. So I hope you liked the vlog. Give me a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to the channel if you would, uh, if you want to. I would really appreciate it. And I'll see you sometime on my next video, probably Tuesday. See you then. Bye.